bank gave me one week notice to clear the four million. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. And probably how long was uh, remaining before you clear the four million? I, I had given them two, two, two years. Uh -huh. Yeah. I wanted to clear this four million within, in fact, less than two years, but I'd given them two years. Uh -huh. They refused, so they auctioned my house mm -hmm. after renovating it, you know? When I knew now this is where I want to stay, mm -hmm. I spent every coin that I had. There was a party, you know, in the field. We, we, when you have time, we just sit together and have a drink, eat together, because mm -hmm. it's a unit, it's a, it's a family. Mm -hmm. So one day he told me that, uh, Alice, can you come to um, my room? It, it was just a guest house, mm -hmm. yeah? So all of us were in the same guest house. So they can you come to my room? I went. Your boss is calling you. Are you worried? Uh -huh. So me, yeah, I went there smiling as usual. Mm -hmm. Then he told me, uh, can we have some drink? I have some food here. And then I realized, hey, you know, your sixth sense, eh? when, yeah. when somebody is mixed, that kind of move. You're not kids. Mm -hmm. You'll tell that this guy is up to something. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I resisted. And then he told me, what did you think when I, when I, when I gave you this job? This is the main thing where I've lost my job. Mm -hmm. You wanted to make me a wife in the guest house. I feel so bad that I cannot, I cannot help my children. You know, I'm helpless right now. There's nothing that pains a mother. Then you see that your children need your help and you cannot help them. Because mm -hmm. even you need help, okay? Mm -hmm. So that pains me a lot. The only disheartening thing than depression itself is pretending that you're not depressed. Alice Achieng worked in the United Nations for more than 17 years, and out of it, she says she made a fortune approximately worth 100 million Kenya shillings. But immediately she lost her job. All came crumbling down. Welcome to today's episode of My Story with me, Kevin Phillips Momani, and this is her story. <laughs> so you tell me that yeah. there are days you would sleep with the door open. Mm. Why so? You know when you are suicidal, mm -hmm. you don't think, you don't reason. Mm -hmm. Okay? So me, I reached a point where I just wanted to just die. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I could not even wake up from the bed. As in lift myself up because mm -hmm. I don't have energy. Mm -hmm. I've not eaten for like days, I'm just drinking water. So I became so weak until I said, now maybe I can just die. <laughs> mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Maybe one day I'll just sleep and don't wake up. So I decided to leave the doors open, mm -hmm. this door and the other one. So if I die, people don't break into the doors, they just walk in and find me wherever I'm sleeping. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for inviting us to your place. Mm -hmm. You're most welcome. How is everything? We are fine, so far so good. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, we are surviving. With the times? Uh, it's been difficult, but today I feel much, much better. Mm -hmm. I think because I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, yes. I'm glad that we are here finally. Yes. You know, it has taken us a while to probably have this sit down. Sure. But here we are. For the benefit of those uh, watching you today, mm. I'd really love you to start uh, by introducing yourself. Okay. Let them know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, you by the names, how old you are. Uh -huh. Okay. My name is uh, Alice Achien. Mm -hmm. I was born in uh, Sierra, but I've lived all my life in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother of two, a boy and a girl, mm -hmm. both grown up. Actually, I'm a grandmother of one handsome boy. Mm -hmm from my son's side uh -huh. and um, uh, I grew up in Nairobi, mm -hmm. yes, I was born of course in Siaya, mm -hmm. but then immediately we came to Nairobi, I grew up in uh, Nairobi Eastlands mm -hmm. and I went to my primary school, 
in Islands, mm -hmm. at St. Anne's Primary School, Jogorod. Mm -hmm. But my dad was, uh, he was working with the police force. Mm -hmm. So he kept being transferred. So we've been all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, we've been all over the country. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, actually, I finished in Kitale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I did my O-levels and A-levels. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I went for the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But imagine I was working, then I completed my, my uh, university education after. Uh -huh. uh, well, I was still working. I was quite fortunate. Uh, I got a job when I was quite young. I, th I think my first job was uh, I was 19 mm -hmm. when I did internship uh, with the International Committee of the Red Cross, mm -hmm. the ICRC. Then eventually they employed me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go to university immediately because, mm -hmm. of course, I needed money to take me to the university Positive. since there was no one who, who, who was able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I was working and studying. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the parallel program at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So I graduated with the Bachelor BA Sociology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. So after that, I got another employment as a humanitarian mm -hmm. with the United Nations. Mm -hmm. So my first, <coughs> my first assignment with the United Nations was the Southern Sudan. Mm -hmm. That time it was called o o OLS, Operation Lifeline Sudan. Mm -hmm. They really needed a lot of people because it was, it was a crisis there. Mm -hmm. So they employed, it was mass employment. Actually, we were almost a hundred of us were employed almost at the same time, and then we went to Southern Sudan. Mm -hmm. When was this? Uh, I'm talking of 98. <laughs> 1998. 1998, uh -huh. that's my first UN job uh, mm -hmm. in Southern Sudan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that time, there was no, no place you could see a town or anything. So we used to just go with our tents and uh, choose the biggest tree, stay there, wait for the airdrops. They come and then you distribute food to the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that for like three years. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, three years in South Sudan. And then I went to Pakistan. I was sent on a TDY, what you call the short-term duty stations. Mm -hmm. I went to Pakistan. Also did the same thing, food distribution. Okay, so we would distribute food to the communities and then we are out. After Pakistan, I went to Zimbabwe. Now, that was not a hazardous place. Now, mm -hmm. that was the first job that I, I, I enjoyed because it was a normal country, mm -hmm. normal life. So we worked in, in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Also, humanitarian work, distributing of food and helping the poor, mm -hmm. helping the needy. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, from Zimbabwe, where did I go? I went to Indonesia. I went to Indonesia, still with the UN. Same, same agency. Mm -hmm. So I went to Indonesia during the tsunami. That is the time we were there also. We were helping people, mm -hmm. specifically with food and non-food items. From Indonesia, I think I came to Dafu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dafu, very challenging place. Uh, again, humanitarian. We were taking care of the refugees and mm -hmm. all the needy. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that for three years. Mm -hmm. Uh, then from Dafu, I went now to to the peacekeeping mm -hmm. in DRC Congo. Mm -hmm. So in DRC Congo, it was a bit different now. It was not just food, but we would do different programs like uh, <coughs> like uh, okay, uh, refugees mm -hmm. and people who were affected IDPs, mm -hmm. that kind of job, mm -hmm. humanitarian job. Then uh, after DRC. I came home, mm -hmm. and here I am. Exactly. Mm. Cumulatively, how long do you work in uh, the UN? 17 years. For 17 For years. For 17 years. No, let me add two, because uh, the, the, the peacekeeping is also UN. Exactly. So, 19. 19, 19 years. A total of 19 years working with the UN. Uh -huh. Yes. How was, uh, how was it while you were working there? What I did was really satisfying because generally we were helping people mm -hmm. and you know when you when you see somebody smile because you've given them food mm -hmm. you feel fulfilled wow. yeah so that's what I really loved about what I did uh -huh. the humanitarian part of it exactly yeah you put a smile on somebody's face uh -huh. yes. every other day every other day uh -huh. yeah 
that has been my life for mm. all those 18 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, a time comes when you quit the UN. Yes. What what brings that about? I I didn't quit the UN. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Darfur, <coughs> after after working for two years, I was told that my my position was cut. There was my position was was, was cut, mm -hmm. so it was no longer there. Uh -huh. So I should come home, and they will uh, they will call me later. But something told me it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So I started asking questions. What's, what's going on? How come it's all of a sudden? But then I realized that uh, my relationship with my boss was not good mm -hmm. at that time. We worked very well all these years, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden, he kind of changed the way he was treating me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he, he's, he's a loud guy. So all of a sudden, he would call me come to my office, then I go to his office and shout, 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 okay? Those were red flags. Because we used to work quite well, but all of a sudden that happened, that started to happen. So sometimes he would send me an email on the subject line, see me immediately, you see? So that kind of thing. So I would go there, instead of telling me something like professionally or guiding me on the work front, he would just start shouting at me. Why did you do this? Why did you? So I started getting stressed. Mm -hmm. Darfur itself is a stressful place. So when the, when the job is also, when your boss is adding this stress on you, it becomes very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I remember there's a time I, uh, I was really, really sad. So I asked him, what's going on? Yeah. Am mm -hmm. I not working well anymore? Or what is it? What is it that I'm doing wrong these days? Because you're you're screaming at me in front of my staff because I was head of a sub office. Mm -hmm. So he would scream on, uh, uh, on me in front of staff. So I was like, what's going on? So I just faced him one day and I said, what is going on? He told me, you're going down and you're not going down with me. So I was like, what kind of a language is that? Mm -hmm. Then I realized he was not going to, to renew my contract. You know, in some of, some of these agencies, your life depends on, on your supervisor. Mm -hmm. If he decides to extend your contract, you continue. If he doesn't, too bad. Mm -hmm. So at that time, he had just, he had just uh, confirmed me as a, as a, as a fixed-term staff. And in the UN, once you're a fixed-term, you feel a bit safe. Mm -hmm. Okay? You feel a, a bit safe. So once I w when I was confirmed, I already did a lot of some projects for myself. So mm -hmm. I was so sure I was going to work for the next two years. Mm -hmm. But already I had some projects. Of course, I'd built my mom a house in the village. I'd taken care of my siblings. I was paying school fees for several kids around mm -hmm. me. In fact, my kids were abroad. Yeah, My, my son is a, is a media engineer. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he graduated. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is also doing journalism. Mm -hmm. So they were all out. So I was doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I'd bought land, several pieces of land. You know, I had like six parcels of land in my name. Mm -hmm. I'd planned my life, you know, like this shamba, I'm going to build a house. This is where I'm going to do farming. This is where I'm going to do a business project. Mm -hmm. So all that was in the pipeline. And then all of a sudden, you realize my boss and me are not getting along well now. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I lost my job after working for all those years. Mm -hmm. So I lost my job because they told me, sorry, your, your job is, 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 not, is no longer there. But then I said, no, there is a way I can, I can challenge this because I feel it's unfair. Mm -hmm. So I went, to what I, uh, I went to the ombudsman. We have an ombudsman in the, in the, in the UN. Mm -hmm. So I, said my, <coughs> I mentioned my case and he said, no, 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 it's, uh, you, you, you have to take it up. Okay, because this is, it, there's no reason why you should lose your job. Mm -hmm. So I went even to the legal department, then they advised me you should go to, for the recourse. So I went, to mm -hmm. the, I took up uh, the recourse uh, um, process. Mm -hmm. Now, in the recourse process, you have, to, you have to put your case forward. You have to say exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So then he was told to also say it's part of the story. Mm -hmm. So he wrote a lot of uh, things that were not adding up, mm -hmm. you know? Things that were not there, you know, lies. Mm -hmm. That 
I borrowed money from staff and I was not paying money back. Is that an argument to make you lose your job? Uh -huh. You know, in, somebody should be talking about your competence or incompetence. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Then people can understand. But he was talking about personality, you know, things that we do. When you're in the field, you borrow money, even, even in the office, you borrow money from, from your colleagues. Can mm -hmm. I borrow this? I'll, I'll give you back. Mm -hmm. So he wrote things like those ones. So when I went to, to, to Rome, to, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, to the staff association, you know, usually when you have a case like this, it's got to be handled by the staff association. Mm -hmm. So I, I met them, they listened to me, and they were all like, Alice, this is unfair. We are going to take this case up. Mm -hmm. it, this is, this is, there's no reason here mm -hmm. why you should It's baseless. Yeah, it's baseless. Mm -hmm. So we went through that, we went through that. The staff association took it up. They wrote to the executive director, you know, things were going well. But then all of a sudden, things went quiet. Uh -huh. So I called my contacts at the staff association, what's going on? It's like, you just, just stay at home, we will get back to you. Okay. It went on like that. I had nothing. It went quiet. But I can tell you, it's difficult to, to fight a system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the UN, there's a system. And even in the UN, there's a mafia. You know, there's this clique of people. You cannot penetrate them. Mm -hmm. So when, when they're against you, you cannot fight them. Like me, how do you expect me to fight someone like that? Mm -hmm. So I lost the fight. Exactly. I came back home, jobless. Mm -hmm. I started to think of what what can I do exactly of, or, or better yet before you come back home y yes uh, what probably might have uh, led to this kind of relationship between you and your boss this guy I'll be honest with you mm -hmm. Kevin mm -hmm. I work very hard naturally that's me mm -hmm. you give me a job I'll do it mm -hmm. so he was very happy with my job because he gave me a, I, I was given a sub office which was almost dead but then I revived it. Within six months, this, 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 our, our sub-office was glittering again. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy, he used to drink a lot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows. That's a, that's a fact. He used to drink a lot. I'm not going to mention his name. But he used to drink a lot. And uh, at some point, he started making moves at me. Mm -hmm. Okay? What shocked me w one day was he called me. There was a party, you know, in the field. We, we, when you have time, we just sit together and have a drink, eat together. Because mm -hmm. it's a unit, it's a, pa it's a family. Mm -hmm. So one day he told me that, uh, Alice, can you come to um, my room? It, it was just a guest house, mm -hmm. yeah? So all of us were in the same guest house. So they can you come to my room? I went, your boss is calling you, are you worried? Uh -huh. So um, yeah, I went there smiling as usual. Mm -hmm. Then he told me, uh, can we have some drink? I have some food here. And then I realized, hey, you know, your sixth sense, eh? when, yeah. when somebody is mixed, that kind of move. You're not kids. Mm -hmm. You'll tell that this guy is up to something. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I resisted. And then he told me, what did you think when I, when, I, when I gave you this job? So my antennas were up. I said, this guy is actually up to something. Mm -hmm. So when I refused his advances, I think that's the time now I became, I, I was thrown in the black book. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the time I lost favor with him. And as I told you in some of these organizations, when you lose favor with your supervisor, sorry, the good ones would transfer you, but the evil ones will make sure you lose your job. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I lost my job. Wow. To be honest, that's how I lost my job. Mm -hmm. There was nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why couldn't you build a case around that? I tried to mention this. I mentioned this to the, to the Krikos team. Mm -hmm. But then it's difficult to prove. Mm -hmm. How can you prove? It's my word against him. Mm -hmm. So I was not going to win there. Mm -hmm. OK? So they just, uh, just let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mentioned, I said, this is the main thing where I've lost my job. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make me a wife in the guest house. Uh -huh. I told them. Uh -huh. Yeah. But then uh, you need to prove. Exactly. Yeah. Beyond reasonable doubt. Beyond reasonable doubt. Exactly. Yeah, so I lost my job there. Mm -hmm. yeah. When did you lose your job? I lost my job in 2013. Mm -hmm. Yes. How was it for you that day when you're walking out of the office knowing you're not coming back here again? Uh, you know, it, to, to, to some extent, I wasn't worried. Mm -hmm. 
because you know I'd already put things in place you know I'd invested mm -hmm. yeah I had my land somewhere I had this and that so I was like ah I'll do something else uh -huh. this is not the end of life but when reality hit me when now I started losing my assets mm -hmm. I lost my house I was selling land to save the house I'm selling this car to save the land mm -hmm. I'm selling this other land to save so it was just a, a, a a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Money was just disappearing, or just going, and then I, I, I was left with nothing. Mm -hmm. So I lost everything within one year. Within one year. After losing my job, within one year, I lost everything that I'd worked for for all those years. When you say you lost your house, yes. Uh, what happened? My house was on mortgage. Mm -hmm. The KCB had given uh, us the, the diaspora the UN people who mm. are working in the diaspora, mm -hmm. a very good package of a loan. Mm -hmm. And the interest rate was very low. Mm -hmm. So most of us actually bought, bought stuff during that time. Me, yeah, I went to KCB and I said I want to buy a house because I was living in that house anyway. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to buy it now to become mine instead of paying rent. So I took a loan with the Kenya Commercial Bank, KCB. Mm -hmm. I took this loan before, before mm. I lost my job. Mm -hmm. But now when I lost my job, I still had, I still had a, a, a debt to pay. Mm -hmm. I'd already paid something like 50 million. The house was going for 54, but I'd already paid 50 million. Mm -hmm. By the time I was losing my job, mm -hmm. I already paid 50 million. So I was left with just four, mm -hmm. maybe plus some interest. And I wasn't worried about this four, because remember I'd just gotten my, uh, my fixed term. Mm -hmm. So I knew in these two years, what is four million? after paying 50, exactly. you understand? So I was so confident. Mm -hmm. So when I lost my job, I was disrupted. Yeah, that one really disrupted me. Even the bank noticed that I wasn't paying the normal amount that I used to. I used to pay the bank like 500, 600 a month, 600,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So it was something that I was paying very, very fast. Mm -hmm. I think somebody in the bank noticed that I'm not paying the usual amount because mm -hmm. I moved out from the house and rented it. Mm -hmm. So the rent was not enough. Somebody noticed. I went to them and tried to plead that for them to give me time. Maybe I just pay the interest or whenever I have something I keep on paying. They refused. The bank gave me one week notice to clear the four million. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. And probably how long was uh, remaining before you clear the four million? I, I had given them two, two, two years. Uh -huh. Yeah. I wanted to clear this four million within in fact, less than two years, but I'd given them two years. Uh -huh. They refused, so they auctioned my house mm -hmm. after renovating it, you know? When I knew now this is where I want to stay, mm -hmm. I spent every coin that I had. Kevin, I broke walls, you know, making it the way I want it to be mm -hmm. until I finished. I even changed grass. I brought new soil and planted new grass. You know, I just wanted a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. When I finished doing everything, Kevin, I didn't even sleep in my house after renovation. Mm -hmm. That house was auctioned. In a, in, a, in a period of seven days, you say? They told me you pay this within seven days or we auction. I couldn't. Where was I going to get seven, uh, four million? Mm -hmm. So I lost the house. They auctioned it. At how much did they auction? Do I know? Uh -huh. What I know is it was auctioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. You didn't follow suit? I tried to get my lawyer to do something, but we didn't manage to save it. Mm -hmm. I tried to call friends to help me. Nobody turned up. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I lost my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When was this? And uh, where was the house? The house was, uh, do I mention the location? Yeah. yeah. The, the house was in Runda, mm -hmm. the other side of Mimosa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where it was. That's where my kids grew up. Mm -hmm. So that's where w they knew that as home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where was and uh, when was this? Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you're you're struggling to make sure maybe from all your assets, yeah. you sell this yeah. to pay for this. Yes. But again, you lose the house. You lose the house. Yeah, I was trying to salvage you know when you when you have this you want to save because my main issue was the house mm -hmm. you know without a home Kevin ukifanya kazi wapi yeah so me i wanted to save this house by all means
when they now gave me the notice, mm -hmm. you know, you panic. What do I do? Because, of course, you are not even going to, to sell something tomorrow and get your money. You know, you have to advertise it. You have to get people. You have to tell people that you're selling this. So it took time. But my main aim was to save the house. Mm -hmm. So I started selling the land to save the house. Mm -hmm. Remember, I also have to survive. I have no job. I'm taking care of people. Mm -hmm. Their kids going to school. Then my relatives going to school. My kids are abroad. I have to take care. So I'm selling this, put something in the house, take care of myself on the other side. Exactly. But I couldn't, I wasn't able to save the house. Mm -hmm. My main objective was to save the house. Because mm -hmm. in Nairobi, when you have a roof over your head, 50% of your problem, problems are solved. Mm -hmm. So I lost it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I lost everything within a year. Uh -huh. Yeah. So probably when you left the UN and then within this particular year that you lose everything, yeah. what would you say was your network then? Uh, with my house or without the house? With the house. With the house on, okay, let's give it 54 million. Mm -hmm. Those days, okay, nowadays they are going to over 100, eh? Uh -huh. you know. That time it was 54 million. Take my cars, I had like four cars. I had uh, RVR, which was 700. I had the Benz, which was 2 million. I had my Pajero, which was about 2.5. Hey, how much is that? Come on. I mm -hmm. used to be rich, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, okay. Can we give it 100? Uh -huh. Can we say 100 mi million? 200 million. Yes. So when the, this empire started crumbling down, yeah. what was going in your mind? What do you feel was the problem? Is it barely because you lost the job in the UN? Uh, I think majorly that was it because mm -hmm. lo the loss of you know the job was my anchor you know mm -hmm. that was my foundation mm -hmm. that's why I was remember I'm alone yeah mm -hmm. I'm a single mom mm -hmm. I don't have somebody to help me talk so I'm alone I'm thinking on my own making decisions myself so when I lost the job I think I also lost some direction mm -hmm. you know I got confused I lost the way mm -hmm. now I was doing things like maybe not even thinking properly mm -hmm. yeah so my empire started crumbling because i lost my job mm -hmm. yes i'm not a business person i cannot tell you that i was thinking of doing business i am an office person mm -hmm. yes exactly. so when i lost that i lost direction uh -huh. yeah what now happens after that within this this time that i've lost everything mm -hmm. assuming that now killer kitu imeenda See, I still have my mind. I'm looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not coming. Depression in Anza kuingia pole pole. Palipa kuishi, akuna. You know, you go to this place, you hire an apartment here, you stay there for three months, rent akuna, umefukuzwa. Umeanda kwa inyumba ingine, two months, rent imeisha, unafukuzwa. So imagine, coming from a full house, a six-bedroom house, with all the stuff, you're moving to one bedrooms. I had a cook, I had house girls, I had a uh, gardener, so I gave most of the things to them and some people also that I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically I was left with nothing, you know, you, you, you start all over again, like a, a school girl, mm -hmm. completely with nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have a fork. So I gave out stuff, I lost a lot, which is no big deal. Then I stayed for five years without a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without a job, without an income, just surviving here and there. Mm -hmm. A friend or two sent you something. Uh, by this time, I was completely depressed. I'd, I'd, I'd lost it. But you know, even if you lose it, you have to be strong mm -hmm. because you're a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would still put up my smile, but I was suffering inside. So these five years were really bad because I also felt that I was losing my children, you know. Mm -hmm. We were not close anymore, you know, maybe because of the way I was. So I felt that I was losing my family. I was all alone. Depression kicked in really hard. And then uh, long five years, a lot happened. Mm -hmm. This is the time now I became suicidal, started praying hard, 
this is the same five years that I even stopped praying because I said, now where is God, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Everything was just happening one after the other. Uh -huh. So five long years, a lot of pain, loneliness, you know, until friends ran away. I ended up saying they were not friends. Mm -hmm. I ended up saying they pretended, so they were just tired of pretending, so they left. That loneliness really affected me. Loss of everything that I've worked for so, so hard affected me. Not knowing what next tomorrow really affected me. I'm usually a very enthusiastic person. I'm an outgoing person, but I realized that now I was in my own cocoon. Mm -hmm. I would lock myself in the house for a week without coming out of the door. Kevin, I would sit in the house without even showering for a week, just there, sleeping. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't even sleep, you're just lying down, you know, you're just blank. Nobody to share with. Who are you going to share with? There is no friend around. I used to be, everybody looked up to, uh, uh, upon me. So now who do I go to? They're all kids, you mm -hmm. know? Everybody's below me in the family, so I'm like, let me just uh, sweat it out myself. I got in depression. I even attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's not a joke. I attempted suicide because when you look around you, there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. I actually, <laughs> you know, Panadol, mm -hmm. I took so many of them. Mm -hmm. And then I just told God, let me not wake up tomorrow. You know, those days you just pray, God, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. It's enough. Mm -hmm. You've prayed. You've done everything, nothing is happening. Your life is just going down, down, down. Then I find myself waking up in the morning. So I said, okay, I'm still not dying. Mm -hmm. One day I decided now I'm going to die completely. Mm -hmm. And I'm serious because when it's enough, it's enough. I don't know, people who have been depressed in my situation may understand, but if you have not gone through depression, you cannot understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There's a day I just decided I'm going to stand on, you, you see thicker road. Mm -hmm. There's like a flyover there. I don't know. When you, after Mutaiga, when now you're coming to Tangara, mm -hmm. there's a flyover, there's one up and one down. I decided I'm going to stand there. You know, I don't have even money to take Almatatu to go to town. Mm -hmm. So I was just walking. You know, those days you just walk aimlessly. Mm -hmm. So I said, this is the place I'm going to stand and I'm just going to drop myself and that's it. Then I remembered my children. I said, oh, okay. Then the thought just disappeared. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. See? That is second suicidal thought. But they used to come all the time. Yeah, now this is, uh, this is where I sleep. This is where I spent all my time nowadays. This is all I have. And uh, in case they chuck me out, you know, I don't know where to go from here. Mm -hmm. After five years, a friend of mine, whom I met some time back, but then I realized that she was following my, my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know because we were not talking. We met once or twice before, but then she was following my story. I think, you know, these people who like to talk about people. Mm -hmm. So I think she realized that I was suffering. I lost my job. I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad situation. So one day we met, I think at a supermarket somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then she told me, listen, I can get you a job, come to Congo. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this is Jesus, the one I stopped praying, mm -hmm. so Jesus is back. This lady paid for me up to my visa, she paid for everything. Of course I took a bus, I didn't fly, I took mm -hmm. a bus through Kampala, through Kampala and then Kigali and then Goma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found her waiting for me. It was a, a, a journey of like, it took me three days. I spent uh, a night in Kampala, then during the day, three days, then I reached Goma. She, she was there waiting for me, welcomed me in her house very nicely. Mm -hmm. And she told me not to worry, she's going to talk to people, also, also in the UN. Monday, she's, she goes to work, comes back. Me, yeah, I'm in the house, you know, I don't know anybody. I don't know what, nothing. Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then Friday, I ask her. 
what about the job you told me to come and do? And she just responded to me, as long as you're here, you are under me. Mm -hmm. Red flag. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I said, oh my God, where am I? Mm -hmm. To cut the long story short, she started uh, treating me badly. You know, not like we would treat a sister. Mm -hmm. I later learned that she wanted me to go there so that she would show me how she's above me because I was on top of everyone before. So she wanted to show me that now she can sit on me. And actually she did. Mm -hmm. After staying there for one week, nothing happening. I'm not even being shown anywhere. Then I asked her, what else? What else am I? I mean, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. Then she said, No, you just wait. I'll take you to church. Blah blah blah. So we started going to church. As me, me knowing myself, you know, me ni mtuakuta futa sasa. So I made friends in church very quickly. That's me. I I, I made friends. Started uh, visiting other other ladies. You know, praying together and all that. She mistreated me. I don't want to go into details. Mm -hmm until I found myself out of her house, but inside an orphanage. In, in Goma? In, in Goma. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't, I couldn't stand it, the, the way she was treating me, so I had to find a way out. Mm -hmm. Remember, I don't have money, I don't have anybody, so I joined a volunteer service that we went out one or, one or two Saturdays into this, this, this orphanage. And I made friends with the, with the Catholic sister who was heading, who was taking care of that. We mm. just became friends. You know, when God wants to do something, they do, he, he does it in funny ways. So we just became very close with this, with this lady. And then she told me, why don't you come here and help me take care of the children? I just said, thank God. Do you know, I just moved into orphanage. Mm -hmm. She gave me a room and I, I lived in the orphanage. Mm -hmm. Washing kids, playing with the kids, you know, just a different life. Mm -hmm. Then it became too much. Remember, I'm depressed. I'm not a happy person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, while at the orphanage, I was just deteriorating. You know, mental health. Eh? Mm -hmm. I was just deteriorating. But it's difficult for you to know because I'm, I don't show. Usually, I don't show whether I'm suffering or not. Mm -hmm. So I told the sister that I need to go home if she can find a way for me to to go home. She managed to give me a hundred dollars. Took a bus mm -hmm. to Kigali very nice ride usually, then to, to Dar es Salaam. Arriving in Dar, mm -hmm. I don't know anybody, I don't know where to go. Pesa pia imeisha. Kasema, everywhere kuna kuwaga na kanisa. So I just asked a young boy there, Hi, abari hapa mzuri. Hapa kuna kanisa? Kanyambia, ya kuna yo, utatambia kidogo. Ngazema sawa. Yoneshe, Kijana took one of my suitcases and he's in Kishampaga for your church. Apparently, it's, it, it's a compound, just a, an abandoned compound. Mm -hmm. Of course, with a, with a few old uh, old houses there. I can be in the I mean, Kasema Sawa. I just saw a, a tree in the middle of the compound. I just stayed there. Kakatu, I want a shakula, I want a nini. Just under a tree. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, a watchman comes. Now in Mexico, it will five in the evening. Mm -hmm. A watchman who takes care of the place comes. Niambia, abari mama, mzuri. Umekuja kanisa, ni kasema ni mekuja kanisa. So you spend yeah. time under this tree? Under this tree, mm -hmm. before it started raining. Mm -hmm. So when it started raining, the same watchman came back. Kanyambia, now, I want to open for you one of the rooms. Nobody uses them, but make sure first thing in the morning, nobody should see you mm -hmm. coming from the house. Mm -hmm. So I went in the room and I slept in the room. Early in the morning, I came out with my bags. And then uh, I asked somebody again to show me where the, the bus stop is. Bus is Kuja Kenya. Mm -hmm. So somebody was kind enough. bus stop Dar es Salaam. Imagine you're hungry, you haven't eaten, you're just there. Anyway, after you have a nice kick as I I was shown the buses of Kukuja, Kenya. I found some Kenyans there. I was very frank. I said, I want to go home, I want to but I need to go home. Do you know these Kenyans carried me free up to Namanga? Yeah. Wow. That was a lift. I was brought free.
Uh-huh. Remember you're going to Kenya and you don't even know where you're going. Eh? Uh-huh. Thank God I had to sneak into my, my daughter's uh, college apartment. This is from from Namanga. Yeah. How do you get from Nili Kujana Nili? Ah, Tanzania only knew her quagga, but singing in Pacana Nairobi. Yeah. Uh-huh. I came free. And then now you trans you go to your daughter's Yeah, my daughter's apartment. Uh-huh. Because I had nowhere to go. Kakaka Apo Ile Lazimu Jificha because you know, you don't want people to see you nini nini. Mm-hmm. This is a hostel. Yes. Where was she studying? Yes, I am. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, kuendelea hivyo tu. Then unakumbuka this this lady took me to a church in DRC. Mm-hmm. I made friends. Another lady just called me one morning. Kaniambia, can you find yourself here by Friday? In DRC. In DRC. Uh-huh. There's a job I want you to try. Just make sure you come. Sina pesa. Do you know my daughter made sure that I flew to Kinshasa? She paid for me. I don't know how she paid for me, but I was in Kinshasa through my daughter. Mm-hmm. I got a job mm-hmm. after five years. Mm-hmm. Your job after I did it for a year. Mm? Mm-hmm. And then guess what? My own brother, <laughs> mm-hmm. a Kenyan like me, who is heading the organization there, just refused to extend my contract. What is the reason? I'm not fluent in French. All this time I've been working without, with or without French. So hapo pia nikalus job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which job were you doing? I was now working with the peacekeepers. Uh-huh. Yeah. In Still the, UN. Uh-huh. Yeah, but ki- peacekeepers. Wakaniambia uh-huh. vizuri sana, you just go home. You are going to be, uh, to get your job in an Anglophone, uh, Anglophone country. Because again, I was taken to a sub-office which was almost dead. Mm-hmm. As usual, like Fufu had the, 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 the sub-office. It was now active, you know, people were, it, it was alive again. Mm-hmm. And then these guys just refused to renew my contract. Okay? So, job loss again. Back home. <laughs> Does the one year shape anything in the kind of life you were leading before? It could, one year is too short. Because, you know, just as you know, 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 of course, now you're back to work, you start organizing yourself. Mm-hmm. As usual, mimi na nyumba. Mm-hmm. Took another house in Kisumu, nikaanza kulipa. Sinajua in 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 the job nimepata tena. Mm. So nikachukua nyumba nyingine ya Kisumu nikasema al, hii nitamaliza haraka, you see expensive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know me and houses. I've always wanted a home, uh-huh. you know. Your own home. My own home which has been so elusive. Mm-hmm. So it sin job imesha. Nikakumbuka kule nilikuwa nishalipa lipa kidogo. Those people must have some money. So uh-huh. you know I went to them. Nikamwambia mimi sasa sina kazi. So I can survive on this money. They gave me the, the refund. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in bits. Okay. So now that money that I've been given from refund, no sense I have to get I have to get a house to live. So I rented like a house. Three months in Akwa Shida. You can't pay, sorry. You can't pay the rent. So I moved like I've moved houses. From September 2017 up to now, like 17 times. What? Yes. 17 houses, different locations. Mm -hmm. You can't survive, you can't pay rent, you can't do this, so you keep on going. Mm -hmm. Eventually I said, what can I do? Me, I'm not someone who just sits down. So I said, the little money I have, let me do something. So I start. I opened like a Mpesa shop somewhere there. It didn't do well. Everything needs money. You have to pump money in any business. So I said, now let me look for a place. I start to do something that can get me some income. Mm-hmm. That's when I decided to come to the to the guest house. Okay. I came here because I know my clients are allow- around here. They like uh, homestay. Most of them don't like to stay in hotels. So I said, here yeah, is a, is a, the, the, ma- the market is good, the location is good. I mm. should get some people. Mm-hmm. Then Corona hits. Corona hits, there are lockdowns. No movement, no guests. Okay? Depression again. Now serious, eh? 
Now, second wave of a serious depression. Mm -hmm. Okay? You are alone. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You are there. Nobody to talk to. You know, sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Like, now I'm talking to you. I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need someone to, but there's nobody. The friends were here, all of them ran away. Sure. All my friends left. Uh -huh. The last one left two weeks ago. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. What do they tell you when they're leaving? They can't tell you. Those were not friends. They just uh, got tired of uh -huh. pretending to be your friends because I believe your friends should be there when you really need them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've been going through a lot of pain, mm -hmm. a lot of pain, a lot of uh, anger. Sometimes I'm angry with myself. I feel so bad that I cannot, I cannot help my children. You know, I'm helpless right now. There's nothing that pains a mother. Then you see that your children needs your help and you cannot help them mm -hmm. because even you need help. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that pains me a lot. I don't sleep. Mm -hmm. I just stay the whole night. I watch the sunshine coming up because mm -hmm. I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. Just the pain. It's just the pain in me. I feel so pain. I cry all the time because I don't know what to do next. A friend of mine called me. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you. They're not friends. Mm -hmm. A lady, she called me on WhatsApp and told me that they are really re rejoicing. My downfall, she used the word, we are rejoicing. I ask her, you and who? Tell anybody who, who knew you. Mm -hmm. Anybody who was our friend. We are rejoicing. We are so happy. You used to live so well, you thought you would not go down. She's telling me, not being gossip, she's telling me one-on-one, on, one, on a phone. Mm -hmm. So, such things hurt, you know, such things hurt because people don't understand. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. But when, when, you, when you feel that your friends are happy because you're down, it's so painful. Because I'm, I'm really suffering, I'm really suffering mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. I'm so scared. I'm dying slowly. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do next with my life. I can tell that. If the auctioneers come today, mm -hmm. I'm out of this place. Where am I going? In the streets. Mm -hmm. And friends, Kevin. Mm -hmm. There are no friends. Mm -hmm. There are no friends. They pretend. Where are your kids as of now? They're surviving in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are they doing? My son, they're all hustlers. My son is trying to hustle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He did media engineering, so it's tough for them because even for them, how, how, how can you succeed when your mom is stuck? You know, something, something just happens to you even when you get confused. So I think my, my kids are also quite sad. Mm -hmm. They see their mom suffering year in, year out. You're losing jobs left, right, and center. There's no good reason why you're losing jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are affected, even them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about your daughter? My daughter is also here. She hasn't finished college yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does she do as it now? She tries to survive. You know, these young people with their online things. Mm -hmm. So they keep themselves busy. But she's a model also. So mm -hmm. she does a bit of modeling. Yeah. My son also does DJing. Mm -hmm. As part of his uh, profession, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You told me you are a single mom. Yes. Uh huh. I am a single mom. Uh huh. Mm. Uh, what happened? I lost the person I called my husband in 1997, uh -huh. long time ago. What? Uh huh. Yeah. May soul rest in peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, he was sick for a long time. Uh huh. Yeah. What was he ailing from? I think at the end of the day, the doctor told us that he was, he was HIV positive. Uh -huh. Yeah, so he passed on after a long illness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But thank God, 
I didn't get it because mm -hmm. uh, the doctor told us that I'm a dis we were discordant, discordant couples. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I was saved by the grace of God. So, uh -huh. yeah. You watched him probably waste away. Of course, of course, I did. That was the love of my life. Yeah, I watched him mm -hmm. every step. Mm -hmm. Every step. We tried everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he passed on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you at times feel like uh, probably things would have different? Would have been different had you been around? Yeah, of course. If the, if your two minds are better than one, you mm -hmm. know, he was a very very smart guy. So mm -hmm. I'm sure we would have put our ideas together, and I think it would be better. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it would be better now. So one one may ask or one may wonder. Yeah. Probably on your way up. Now that you say that probably all your friends have deserted you, yeah. do you feel like you stepped on anyone's toes to deserve this? To be honest, mm -hmm. maybe maybe I'm naive because me I always take people once once I'm your friend, I'm your friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bring you clothes and that's it. So maybe I'm naive, maybe I don't know, maybe I wasn't good to other people, but really what would made a, make a friend run away from you mm -hmm. if it is not not wanted to to associate exactly with poverty <laughs> i can say it's not poverty actually i'm just broke <laughs> uh -huh. i'm just broke i'm not poor uh -huh. i'm just broke uh -huh. so i just need to be lifted a bit mm -hmm. and i'll be there mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah so probably your friends they were only with you during your exactly your good times exactly uh -huh. yeah. i used to hear those stories but now i've seen it myself what? That your friends can actually desert you. But by the way, even your family members eh, mm -hmm. can run away from you when you don't have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you tell me that uh, you don't sleep. Can't sleep. Most of the time I don't sleep. I just can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I try, I can't. Mm. You go to bed, just watch. Yeah. As the sun comes up again in the morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hard to sleep. I, 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 I don't know. Is it a sickness? <laughs> I mm -hmm. think it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I feel tired, I want to go to bed. But when the minute I get into bed, nothing. Just mm -hmm. wake up again. Mm. Just watch until I see the sun rays coming through the window. Mm -hmm. That's everyday thing. Mm -hmm. mm. But I know it's, it's, it's depression. Those are some signs of, of being acutely depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing that you can still afford a smile. Yes, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always try to maintain my smile. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll be dead by now. So, uh, as at now, how do you survive? Um, you remember I told you I'd, I'd, uh, I had some savings. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start um, a guest house. And uh, as I told you, it's not, it's not doing well because of the lockdown and the corona I business. My target group, I told you, was the UN and the embassies. So right now, I'm surviving by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I sleep hungry all the time. I had my nice doggy here. I had to give it to a friend because I was scared the dog would die of hunger because I don't have... I don't have food as before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. I don't have food. I don't have nothing. Sometimes, <coughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. uh, why, one will ask, why don't you probably go back home? In the village, huh. where is that transport? Because I was just waiting for transport to help me go home. Maybe I take one of two things and then I go to sit with my mom for a bit. But I don't even have that money to mm -hmm. go home. So I'm just praying that somebody visits the guest house and, you know, book it. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you look at how everything has turned out, did you ever maybe at one point see yourself here? No. No. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there will be a day that I'll sleep hungry. Forget about being in this situation. I didn't know that I would sleep hungry one day. But I've slept hungry several days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't envisage this. I didn't see it at all. Anything can happen but sleeping hungry? No. 
mm -hmm. the first time in my life. Even the four or five years that I was without a job, I didn't sleep hungry. Mm -hmm. But now I'm sleeping hungry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do your kids know about this? I don't want them. I don't want to disturb them a lot. In fact, I don't want to worry them. So I always don't tell them much. Mm -hmm. It's just to worry them. So let me just Test sweat it through uh -huh. on my own. But they're likely to watch this. I, yeah, it's okay if they watch. I know they'll be very mad at me, but sorry, I had to say something. Uh -huh. Yeah. What about your siblings, the ones you helped pay your school, school fees for them? They're also struggling. Nobody has a job, you mm -hmm. know? Nobody has a job. Mm. Mm -hmm. Remember, I was, the, I, I was the, what do you call the it? The sole breadwinner. Yeah, winner. of that family, of the entire family. They mm -hmm. all looked up, upon me. So now, when I'm, even when I'm down, I don't want them to know that I'm really down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to protect them also. Mm -hmm. mm. I can survive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. not even your husband's uh, family? Those ones, we stopped talking the minute I buried him. Why so? Because they said I'm the one who killed him with AIDS. What? I yeah. They said I'm the you one. You are not infected him. yourself. I'm not. They did, you know, people just talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, they gave me very few months to live. Months. Uh -huh. My mother in law said it openly that I'm going to die very soon with my daughter. Mm -hmm. She didn't know that we were discordant couples. You see? Uh -huh. Yeah. So her, she thought that would save their the face. Of the family. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. So you had to leave. I had to leave. We we don't. In fact, we don't. We don't talk. I don't, there's no contact with the uh -huh. other family. Yeah. And it's been actually more than twenty. Of years. course, mm -hmm. it has been twenty-four years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, now, particularly for those of you who are, who are watching you right now. Yeah. Personally, I feel like uh, from the kind of conversation we, you, we've had. Mm -hmm. You're sinking deeper and deeper into yes. depression by the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would a counsellor's hand help? I would appreciate if I could get a counsellor because I've never, I've never went to one. Mm -hmm. A because of the resources, you know, nothing is for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if I get a counsellor, I would appreciate. Wow. If they can offer the services, I need it especially now. This is now. I'm deep. Mm -hmm. I'm deep in the hole right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need someone to talk to. You never know who's listening, and in terms of probably a job for you or mm -hmm. something, is it something you will look out for? I wouldn't mind to work again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I need it for my my mental health. Uh -huh. Yeah, I need to tell them they're listening. <laughs> I know that we are one big family okay. called the Tuko family. Okay. You never know who's listening. Sure. Uh -huh. Let them know your qualifications. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, I did BA sociology, and mm -hmm. I've been working in the humanitarian world. So I basically call myself a humanitarian worker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take care of the needy. We do food distributions. We take care of the IDPs. We the refugees. Yeah, I've been. I've worked in many countries. Like as I mentioned earlier in the program, mm. that I've worked in South Sudan during the Operation Lifeline Sudan, where there's a lot we were doing with the needy. I've worked in Pakistan, again, uh, of uh, giving food to the needy. I've been to Darfur. I've been to Indonesia during the tsunami. So basically, I can work. And that is not that is not going to limit me. I also have experiences in other fields like HR. I've mm -hmm. done HR. I've done pension schemes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but what I would love to do is what I know best: humanitarian affairs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. What are the life lessons you draw from this? Wow. Just uh, talk to someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me talk to a mother like me. Uh -huh. Or let me talk to my former colleagues. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I've seen three of them die uh -huh. because of depression. What? Yes. After three, losing? After losing jobs mm -hmm. from the UN, mm -hmm. the three of them have died. I'm mm -hmm. sure more, but I know the, the close ones are three. three. Definitely depression. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell people to reach out. If you feel you're depressed, kindly reach out. You can look for Kevin and talk to Kevin the way mm -hmm. I looked for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
depression kills. Mm -hmm. You must be able to reach out. As a mother with children, you must try not to go deep down and lose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost lost it. But because of my children, they gave me strength. And I'm surviving, and I know I will survive. Mm -hmm. Yes, this will be over. This is, this just will pass. Just a face. It's just a face. Uh -huh. Yeah, it has hit me so hard, but it's just a face. Maybe God wanted me to learn something, which I've learned, especially friends. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially friends, because me, I took everybody as a friend. Mm -hmm. But now I know not all of them that smile at you are your friend. Not mm -hmm. everybody who visits you and have party with you is your friend. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I don't want your kids to be mad when they watch this. Yes. Tell them something. Ah, uh, my God. My babies, I love them so much. Mm -hmm. I know I've been hiding a lot from them because I don't want them to hurt. They've hurt enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've suffered enough. So I've been keeping so much away from them. I know they'll be mad at me, but please forgive me. I just had to talk. I just had to get it off my chest. It's also therapy. So the therapy for me to talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, their mom loves them. Oh, I love them so much. That's why I protect them from so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like most of the story they're going to hear here. I've never talked about this with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. They do not know much about me. They just know my mom is a strong mom. Yeah. But you know, this, the, the, the strong women suffer most <laughs> because everybody think you, you can handle everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can handle it, but inside you're also dying, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But help is necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If yes. someone would just come and give me some counseling, I would appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yes. It would be so much yeah. needed. Thank you. Personally, uh, you have a friend in your elder son now. Thank you. I may not be as uh, his age. Yeah but you could talk to me again. Okay. I don't mind. I'm always a phone call away. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank uh -huh. you for accepting to hear my story. I wish you I appreciate. Well. I wish you well. Thank you so much. All will be fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. God bless. From probably owning an empire worth over 100 million Kenya shillings, this is what she's been reduced to. And what she tells me is your friends are likely or will more likely desert you at your lowest and when you need them most. Reporting for Toko News, my name is Kevin Phillips. 